So the far right is certainly having a normal one in the wake of the red wave not materializing. Um, you do have your classic, you know, certain politicians go right to their narrative and start humping it relentlessly. So like Marjorie Taylor Greene is out there saying, can we say it? This is a slowly stolen election. <laughs> um, and you have guys like this. So this is Nick Fuentes. He, uh, you know, came to prominence on the far right. He was part of like the alt right. And um, he, I get, I don't, I don't know. I think he's been deplatformed from all like the major uh, social media outlets. He has his own thing now. Um, and Right Wing Watch got this video of his reaction to what went down in the midterms, and I wanted to share it with you guys. You got to recognize the fact that this is a godless country. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> it's immoral. It's wrong. It's heinous. It's evil. But this is an evil country. <laughs> And this country will surprise you with how evil it is. And that's why you got... <laughs> One of the main arguments my entire life that the right has made against the left is that, like, you're just America haters, bro. You're, you just think it's a bad country. You just think it's evil. You're just America haters. And, of course, the left response is like, what? No, that's not... No, when we criticize it, we're just trying to improve it. We're trying to make it better. Here is somebody on the far right flat out saying, like, no, it's an evil country. It's a godless country. Which, by the way, if it was actually godless... Kind of based. Like some of the least godly places in the developed world, it's in the Scandinavian region, where they have phenomenal healthcare and free college and high wages. <laughs> so, you know, causation correlation issue might not be directly linked, but maybe it is. Who knows? Who knows? And it's just, you know, it's more correct to be agnostic or atheist and not believe in any sort of metaphysical goofiness. Taking no shot at my, you know, the fellow moderate religious folks out there. I got nothing but love for you. But it's good to not have any fundamentalism that sort of steers your country in the wrong direction um, on a regular basis. You gotta get this out of your head that there is some silent majority cavalry that's gonna come out of the woods and save us at the last minute. It's not. That's an awesome admission. That's right. Yeah. No, there is no silent majority on the far right. There is no... It's not there. In fact, when you look at the polls... People are very. People are not just center left. They are left. They are left. They want to raise the minimum wage. Um, they want more unions. They want higher taxes on the rich. They want universal health care. They want uh, free college. They want paid time off. They want to legalize marijuana. They want to legalize uh, abortion. There are a handful of issues where Americans are not on the left, like the death penalty, for example. It's over 50% that still support the death penalty. But honestly, you could count on one hand the number of right-wing positions that Americans have. And this is, he's, look, he's spitting here. He's spitting when he says this. He's right. He's right. Ain't no silent majority for the Trump types. Not there. When we meet the left on the battlefield and they outnumber us like five to one, that's it. But the point is, when you look at these things like uh, abortion... It's popular. People like abortion. Hate it, but it's true. It to be fair, to, be, to inject a little more nuance into the conversation, it's not that simple to say they like abortion. The polls show, and it depends which poll you look at and how they phrase the question and whatnot, certainly an overwhelming majority support Roe versus Wade. It was like over 60% that support Roe versus Wade. Um, but I, I forget if it was Pew or Gallup, but they asked the question, should abortion be totally illegal, legal in all cases, or legal with some exceptions. And the most popular position is legal with some exceptions. So in other words, people want it to be legal, but they're so-so on late-term abortion. Um, you know, they want there to be rules around it, but generally want it to be legal. The least popular position is illegal in all circumstances. Depending on what poll you look at, it's anywhere from like a high of 19% to a low of like 6%. You can thank the Jewish media for that. <laughs> Abortion's popular. Sodomy's popular, you know, being gay is popular, being a feminist. He said sodomy is popular. Yeah, well, sodomy is as defined as oral sex and anal sex. You're always going to be fighting a losing battle if you're trying to take down that one, man. <laughs> People tend to like pleasurable things, and those make the list. It's popular. Sodomy's popular. You know, being gay is popular. Being a feminist is popular. Sex out of wedlock is popular. Contraceptives are... That's all popular. That's all... That's not to say it's good. That's not to say I like that. Popular means the people support it, which they do. And uh, and it sucks, and it is what it is, but that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. We need to take control of the media or take control of the government and force the people to believe what we believe, 
or force him to play by our rules and reshape the society. That is quite an admission. At first, it sounded like a joke, but then he went on to say, like, no, unironically, let me play you it again. recognize it popular. That's all. That's not to say it's good. That's not to say I like that. Popular means the people support it, which they do. And uh, and it sucks, and it is what it is, but that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. We need to take control of the media or take control of the government and force the people to believe what we believe or force them to play by our rules and reshape the society. Look, I I like the honesty here. I do. I do. He's admitting people don't agree with me. They don't agree with the far right. So we should force them to. We should force our rules on everybody. Yeah, we have a term for that. Authoritarian. Now, he's not going to run away from that label because he just embraced dictatorship. So uh, look, I applaud the honesty. Um, but I am deeply anti-authoritarian. I'm against authoritarianism. I'm against it on the right. I'm against it on the left. There is such a thing as left authoritarianism. That would be like Joseph Stalin, for example. That would be, you know, a country that might lean left economically, but then they also, like, control the media and don't let people criticize the government. That's authoritarianism. I'm against that. I'm a libertarian leftist. I believe in democracy. I also believe in co a constitution, so your rights are sort of off the table, but constitution, democracy, uh, I'm deeply uh, anti-authoritarian. He's, he's just flat out saying it, man. We need a dictatorship. People don't agree with us. Look, here's... I mean, there's a million problems wrong with dictatorship, right? But the issue is there is no self-correcting mechanism in a dictatorship, right? It, it's just one person controls everything, says, you know, what the rules are, and nobody's allowed to disagree, and they can do whatever the fuck they want. So then that, you know, begs the question, well, what happens when these people no, don't agree with the dictator, right? Like, they think, yeah, we need a dictator, and the dictator, you know, is going to agree with us on on everything. Yeah, but if it's just total authoritarian control, totalitarian control in one person, then what happens in a situation where your dictator dies, and then there's a new dictator, and the dictator just doesn't agree with you? You know? I, I, it's weird that they don't, like, when you are trying to craft a system and a civilization... You want it to maintain over the long run. You want it to, to sort of have checks and balances and be able to thrive almost regardless of the fact that humans vary and change their beliefs and grow and some die and new ones come. And so you want it to work in the long run. A dictatorship by its very nature is unstable. Because then when the dictator goes, there's a power vacuum and there's like another dictator and it could be bloody to get to that point and there's nothing that's appealing about a dictatorship. The only thing is you can say, if the dictator happens to be right about something, they could kind of change on, change on it automatically. Like you kind of see this in China where they're like, yeah, climate change is a problem. Let's just go, we're just going to build out the green sector and they can do it like that. There's no gridlock. There's no, you know, you don't run into any hurdles of trying to, build consensus in a bipartisan fashion. And so, th like, efficiency, you could say efficiency is part of it, but that's, like, the only positive thing associated with it. There's no self-correcting mechanism. There's no voice of the people. There's no checks and balances. And so to want a system like that is astonishing. It's astonishing. I mean, of course, what he means is, like, I want to be the dictator, or somebody exactly like me needs to be the dictator. It's just such a hollow, sad ideology, isn't it? But look, again, hey, points for the honesty. He's saying he's saying it outright. People don't agree with us. I want to make them agree with us. I We should have a dictator. But I will say this. Look, final point. What's very encouraging to me is that, you know, the most hardcore Trump candidates lost. And these are the ones who still deny the election. Some of them were at January 6th. Just insane. These are people who are anti-democratic. Um, most of them lost. Like, um, what is it, Secretary of State races, or I think it was Secretary of State races. There were about 10 of them with Trump candidates. Only two of the Trump candidates won. That's phenomenal. Uh, the Trump candidates ran behind everybody else. So, like, Georgia, for example. Kemp was not a Trump guy. He's a hardcore Republican, but not a Trump guy. He stood up to Trump and said, I'm not going to steal the election in Georgia for you. He blew out Stacey Abrams, whereas Herschel Walker is actually down to, to Warnock. So, and in, in Pennsylvania, too, Mastriano. 
hardcore Trump candidate running for governor against Shapiro. Shapiro obliterated Mastriano. At the same time, Fetterman beat Oz pretty handily, but Shapiro won over Mastriano even more. Why? Because Oz was a little more moderate and Mastriano was more extreme. So there's like an eight percentage uh, point difference between them. So the most insane candidates did the worst. And then we were all expecting, hey, they're going to turn around and deny the election too. Thankfully, they didn't. At least to this point, we don't know yet what's going to happen with Carrie Lake. But with all the other hardcore Trump candidates, they actually conceded. Unironically credit. But this is something I'm sure Nick Fuentes looks at and he's like, I hate that. They shouldn't do that. Okay, so he wants the chaos. He wants the chaos. He wants the uncertainty. He doesn't want the peaceful transition of power. And at least he's open and honest about the fact he likes a dictatorship. He likes authoritarianism. He likes force telling people what to do. Uh, look, my my political ideology is simple, and I can I can boil it down in this sense. When it comes to social issues, I want to maximize freedom as much as possible within reason. That's where I am on social issues. When it comes to economic issues, I'm an economic patriot, and I'm opposed to the economic royalists and the money changers. Okay, so that's it. Summing it up on social issues, pro freedom. Pro-freedom as much as possible within reason, and on economic issues, I'm an economic patriot. I believe in economic patriotism. That's my ideology. What's his? Well, I mean, look, at least he'll tell you directly. He'll be honest <laughs> about what he believes, but he's on the far right, and um, he believes in dictatorship. He believes in authoritarianism, so he wants social controls. He doesn't want you to have freedom in the social realm, um, and economically, Lord only knows. I, I don't know what his beliefs are economically. Uh, he could be like some of the other far-right folks who sprinkle in some aspects of economic populism with his ideology, or he could be, you know, on the far-right in the sense that he just loves free market shit. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it all comes to naught anyway, because uh, this is unappealing just based off this one minute and 14 seconds. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.